Welcome back to another video. It's the one and only Pocket Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about the partnered Minecraft Bedrock Edition server known as Lifeboat. This video took me hours to make and edit, so if you could take a second to leave a like and subscribe, it'd be greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to leave a comment on your thoughts in the situation. Click the little bell to have notifications for all my future live streams and videos. But without further ado, let's go. Okay, so today we're going to discuss how the most OG Minecraft PE server, Lifeboat, went from 50,000 concurrent players to now only having 7,000. Yes, 7,000. But before we do this, let's begin to understand the story of Lifeboat. Lifeboat, or better known as LBSG, was created on October 17, 2013. They started off with game modes such as survival games, capture the flag, and the walls. They really started grabbing a lot of attention in the very small Minecraft PE community because at the time there was absolutely no good servers where people could play with their friends. It was founded by a man known as Rain TDR and his son William, who was a developer for the server. They really began to make a name for themselves as survival games was really popular back in 2013 and 2016. Almost every single popular MCPE YouTuber was recording on LBSG. People such as JFM, Hazecraft Gaming, and NextCPL. Things really began to heat up for them as soon as the game was getting better in the 0.9.0 update. Alright, but fast forward two years later and on June 21st, 2015, LBSG actually broke the record for the most players on a Minecraft server at one time, reaching 37,527. And after this, they would peak at about 50 to 60k players for the next two years. However, things started taking a turn for the worst on October 21st, 2015, when Lifeboat lost their core piece of their team. It was William TDR. He left Lifeboat with this final tweet right here. Isn't it tough, man? Isn't it tough? He went on to pursue his dreams and left LBSG while leaving Lifeboat to his dad, Rain. Things would drastically get worse and worse as the community and players started feeling very unhappy with the staff team and their developers. They felt like they were being way too careless about the players and only caring about the money. I actually found a video that was posted in July 2018 that blew my mind. It's from a guy named PopZQ who shares his experience as a lifeboat moderator and why he resigned. Here's a few clips that I found really interesting. Curious note, you might have thought this video was a little bit harsh, but the truth is that Lifeboat kind of had it coming. Now don't get me wrong, Lifeboat is a great network, I really enjoy playing on it, and if you enjoy playing on a fun network, have fun on it, but being a part of the community isn't exactly great since all that they're going to do is lie to you. And plus, another thing that is notable is that the developers, for some reason, have added an angel to capture the flag, and yet they still haven't fixed the duplication glitch on Bounty Hunter, which completely makes it unfair for everyone. Everyone. So I'm just, you know, throwing that out there that Lifeboat does have its fair share of problems and they really just need to get their stuff together because they're going to lose a lot of players who are in the community and I just wanted to bring this to light quickly. You guys are their dedicated players and I saw that as a moderator and I would see them lie to you all the time and it kind of got on my nerves a little bit which is part of the reason that I ended up resigning. Plus, they are honestly all about money. They don't really want players' happiness. I mean, here's an example. I was actually previously on the creative server I would moderate on it a little bit and I'd clear a few plots out that were inappropriate but pretty much I noticed that I actually started banning griefers for a while since I didn't know any better after I banned a few griefers I would notice if you ever go on a creative server in lifeboat you'll eventually see some yelling oh my gosh, griefing, someone's griefing me, someone's breaking my build, blah blah blah, etc, etc. And pretty much, I cleared out some griefers and chat was happy. No one was yelling, no one was, you know, swearing, no one was getting themselves muted. And I brought it up with Caleb, I said, hey, why don't we implement a rule for no griefing? And, you know, when moderators are on creative, they can get rid of griefers. But he actually completely shut me down on that idea, no matter how much I brought it up. And he's just like, no, we need players to buy plot tickets. No, we need players to do this. No, we need players to do that. So what that showed me is that he He's choosing, you know, instead of dedication to the server, he's choosing, you know, money and getting payment. And I understand how the developers actually, some do actually live off of the server, but they've got plenty. I mean, people buy ranks and stuff. And honestly, I've never been on any Java Edition server which has griefing allowed that's not like anarchy. So, anyway, sorry for this long rant. But I just wanted to bring that up to you guys that this is an actual thing that you probably do want to think about if you want to dedicate yourself to this network. I know that I sure as hell won't be any longer, <laughs> but I really appreciate you all so watching. So there you have it. I'm not going to waste any more time talking about Lifeboat if they can't spend any time caring about their fans. Let's be real here. A good server is usually never made pay to win, especially servers partnered with Microsoft. However, it gets even worse. 
In early 2020, Lifeboy decided to remove their number one game mode, which was known as survival games. The entire legacy that they built was dropped off for cheap role plays and low quality game modes. This video was never intended to hate, and I will never hate on Lifeboat, but I will always be honest. And when you factor all of this and what they have now, it's a shame. Which leaves me with one last question. Should they still be partnered? If you haven't seen my gameplays on Lifeboat, look at the screen right now. This is what they look like in 2020. A pretty nicely built hub which changes once a year, but the game modes are very simple. They got Prison, Skyblock, Bed Wars, Survival Mode, Sky Wars, Battle Royale, Zombie Apocalypse, and Dungeons. Now I know these sound fun, but you really gotta try them out for yourself. And you gotta realize only a few hundred are playing these, and the most they have is survival mode with about 1900 concurrent players. Do you see what I mean now? When I say quality over quantity, I mean it. Lifeboat doesn't understand this and has lost out on so much potential. But anyways, that's the story of Lifeboat summed up. It's been Pocket Gaming. It was a pleasure recording this one for all of you guys. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. I love making these videos. Anyways, I'll catch you next time. Empire out.